A warm spring day on the Dorset coast. This is Tudlan Bay, a stretch of coastline to the west of Bournemouth. It looks very different now to the way it did 400 years ago, largely as a result of biological succession. This map of 1575 shows only a thin strip or peninsula of land. This was composed of sandy soil containing very little vegetation. Over the last 400 years, sand dunes have been building up along the eastern side of the peninsula. The dunes began growing from the south to the north and at the same time another arm began growing southwards from the harbour entrance. These two arms of sand gradually overlapped, then joined together, cutting off a piece of Studland Bay and forming a lake in the middle. The original peninsula is now approximately two kilometres from the sea, and the land in between consists of three ridges with low-lying land between them covered with vegetation. All these changes have been brought about by biological succession. To understand the changes that have taken place over the past 400 years, one must start at the beach. The beach is composed of sand, which is washed up by the sea. Exposed headlands are being eroded by the waves and the weather, and the sand which results is washed onto the beach by water currents. Sand is a very unstable and unfavourable habitat for living organisms, but rotting seaweed on the beach forms a habitat and provides food for a few animals. Sand flies are one species which live in these conditions. This female sand fly is laying her eggs on the seaweed. When the tide is out, the sand dries, and if there is a wind from the sea, the sand is blown up the beach. Objects such as stones, shells and things left behind by visitors cause eddy currents and the sand piles up. This sand contains little humus but a lot of salt, conditions which most plants cannot tolerate. But some plants, whose leaves lose little water, actually thrive in dry, salty sand. Marum grass is one, and it grows very vigorously. As the plants grow, they trap more wind-blown sand and grow even more quickly, both up through the sand and towards the sea. Ridges of sand and marum grass can grow up to 50 feet high in ideal conditions. The marum grass has a vigorous system of roots and rhizomes which stabilizes and consolidates the sand, holding it in place against the wind. This is a rhizome, which allows the plant to reproduce vegetatively. When the madam grass has established itself, other plants start to colonize the sand dunes. This is lime grass. Even at this early stage, food chains are developing. Sand sedge, 
starts to spread. These small rosette-like plants lie flat on the sand and help to stabilize it. Sea bindweed creeps across the sand and all these plants provide habitats for some organisms. On these young and yellow sand dunes, conditions are still unfavorable to lots of species. But as the sand stabilizes, other plants invade the area and succession is underway. At this stage, the sand is still salty, with little humus and nutrients are scarce. Drainage is very rapid, but as the sand rises above the water table, the salt is leached away. Now new species arrive, many blown in by the wind, and some find the acid conditions to their liking. Heathers and ling grow between the grasses and slowly force them out and the area becomes a dune heathland. Many different lichens grow among the heathers. Mosses grow between the heather and the lichens. The dune heathland forms a habitat for insects and animals which form part of a food chain. As the plants are replaced by new growth, the old plants decay and form humus, which slowly leaches through the sand. As the humus increases, small trees begin to grow. The first ones are often pine trees. Gorse blows in the spring air alongside a sallow a form of willow. And here, in the dune heathland, a rare bird, the Dartford warbler, builds its nest. A carrion beetle rests on a sallow leaf. Further from the shore, birch and pine trees have grown to a good height and shelter a sapling oak. In the damp areas between the dune ridges, royal ferns have rooted. A herbivorous beetle searches for food.
now the heathland slowly changes to woodland. In the woodland, mature birch, pine and oak trees grow. Sweet-scented honeysuckle climbs up the trees and hoverflies float in the shade. The mature trees tower over the undergrowth growing out of the woodland floor of sphagnum moss and pennywort, which completely cover the soil. Space is in short supply. Mosses and lichens compete with one another. And rotting timber forms a habitat for the moisture-loving mosses. The humidity is much higher in the woodland than on the sand dunes. Because of this higher humidity, the vegetation is much richer and has formed a thick layer of humus with little or no trace of the original sand. Many species of insects, plants, birds and animals exist in this small area reclaimed from the sea by biological succession. As the madam grass grows towards the sea, the dunes, the heathland and the woodland, with their different organisms, inevitably follow. The coastline of this area of Dorset has been changing for hundreds of years. It is still changing and will continue to do so.